What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV and today I'm so excited to bring you this video. We are actually in Townsend, Tennessee for a Bronco event and uh, coincidentally Ford Motor Company has actually got a couple Broncos here. So in this particular video we're going to talk about the two in the four-door Bronco and give you a hands-on look at exactly what you get and hopefully answer a couple of questions that you guys may not have had answered in a couple of the other Bronco videos that you guys have seen. Before we go any further, as you guys know that we are a Ford dealership located in Bessemer in Pell City, Alabama, and we are offering absolutely no dealer markups on any Bronco reservation. So at the time of this video, you can still place a reservation. If you haven't already done so, consider either swapping your reservation to Town & Country Ford or give us a brand new reservation. Uh, once again, zero dealer markups. We'll be happy to help you with that if you need help. Um, now, a couple of other things that we want to talk about as far as the timeline is concerned. Um, today's uh, date is actually October the 7th, and sometime in mid-October, Ford Motor Company is going to come out with the build-in price tool for this particular Bronco. If you don't have a reservation, I recommend go ahead and place the reservation uh, right now. Um, and then, um, uh, by the way, the reason you want to do that is because it's 100% refundable. Um, but then, if you, uh, when that build-in price goes live, you can play with all the options options. You can look at the configurator, see exactly how you might want that vehicle spec'd out. That drops in the middle of October. Sometime in December, Ford Motor Company will allow us to take those reservations and convert them into actual orders. And then sometime in the first quarter of 2021, we'll be able to give you specific dates or uh, date ranges, that is, for allocation scheduling when your car will be built, and then also an estimated date of arrival for delivery. Uh, so all of that is being said. I'll have the link for the reservation uh, in the description if you want some more information. Uh, the other thing I, are, I forgot to mention, no dealer markups and also no mandatory accessories, you know, like door edge guards and all this other kind of stupid stuff that a lot of these dealerships are doing. So if you want some more information about that, hit that link down below to place your reservation. Without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the truck. First up, let's talk a little bit about the exterior of the Bronco. So obviously this is the two-door version and that's what every Bronco up until this point has been, a two-door. Uh, for the first time ever, Ford is actually got a four-door Bronco available. Um, hopefully, um, it's not here yet, but hopefully it'll show up a little later today so that way I can actually give you guys some footage of that vehicle as well. If not, I guess I could just put some B-roll footage on top. But anyways, uh, let's talk a little bit about the modularity of the body. So Ford spent a lot of time uh, making sure that one, this vehicle is off-road capable. We're going to talk about that later on in the video, but what I want to talk about is the modularity of what's going on. Um, so the beautiful thing about it is this particular vehicle has actually got the rock rails built in to the side of the vehicle. Now the nice thing is is they're actually built into the body uh, as well so the structure of the body is where this uh, this lies and word on the street is is that it can actually support the weight of the vehicle or at least one side of the vehicle that's still to be determined. But what I want to talk about is the modularity of even things like um, the doors. As you can see this has got the tube doors but when I first got here it actually had the physical doors on it and literally I saw these guys in three minutes swap it out the doors to these tube doors. Now the other nice thing you'll like about it is that even the fenders and the body panels can easily be removed with just a simple couple of bolts. And so if I'm gonna, if I know I'm going to Moab or if I'm going to somewhere that I'm probably gonna damage my fenders anyway, I might even pull them off or, you know, the cool part is, is even if you wanted to accessorize it after the fact, you'd have the ability to, because you're not having to break any seams or welds or anything like that, automatically can swap everything out. I think Ford has done a really good job of making sure that this is an enthusiast vehicle, not just something that someone's going to buy and drive every day. While we're still on the topic of modularity and on the outside of the vehicle, I want to talk about the actual removable top. So as you can see, this particular vehicle has got the hard top version on it. But one thing that you're going to absolutely love is that the rack, this is a y Yakima rack. I, I apparently I got butchered in the last video on the pronunciation. A Yakima, Yakima, I guess it depends on what part of Alabama you're from. Uh, but anyways, so you actually have this hard top that is removable. And the cool part is, is that the rack actually mounts in on the windshield and then 
also in the backside. So if you want to remove this little piece, you can actually remove this to get an open air feel while still having the rack up here and also having load on it. I think that is a lot of attention to detail that Ford did a great job on. One thing I forgot to mention to you as far as the tube doors are concerned is that it's going to be crash test rated. So just like the normal door that comes on the Bronco, if you go with this accessory, it is already pre-done as far as the crash test rating. So you know this is going to be just as safe, if not maybe almost as safe as the normal door itself. I think that's pretty cool and well done to Ford for attention to detail in that regard. This particular vehicle is the Badlands version and this is not a typical walk around where I'm just going to show you every option that this particular vehicle has. I'm going to kind of show you a little bit of everything that you need to know that I haven't had the chance to actually show you guys because I've not been around one yet. But one of the things I want to point out to you, this particular Badlands actually has the heavy duty steel front bumper and the thing I like about this bumper is once again it's modular. You actually have the end caps that normally go right in here. They've actually pulled those off because it's modular and now you've got a little extra room for clearance if you're off-roading or if you just want that look. I think that's really really cool. This one also happens to have the worn winch up front that is also a Ford accessory and uh, we're gonna get a little more into the accessories later but it's I think it's pretty cool that Ford Motor Company is going to allow you to purchase all of these accessories straight through the dealership and you can finance it all into the vehicle purchase itself or just you know, however you want to pay for it, but it's nice that Ford and Ford Credit and all these other lenders will actually recognize the cost of these accessories for financing purposes. I think that's a first time, if I'm not mistaken, that Ford's done that, and it might be a first time that any manufacturer's done that. I'm not sure, so if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments down below. If you're thinking about getting a two-door Bronco, you might be interested in knowing what is it like to actually get in the back seat. I don't think I've seen that on any YouTube video. Let's see if I can do this before anybody stops me. <laughs> so open up the tube door with the actual handle right here. You've got the lever. Well, actually, you can tell this is my first time of doing this. Yep, I can go ahead and tell you that this is not meant for tall people in the back seat. Holy smokes. I am definitely going to be going for the four door, but I will tell you that once you're back here, you actually have a pretty decent amount of headroom. Uh, not bad at all. And the cool part is, is you've even got in this back seat on the backrest, you've actually got this little organizer style thing where you can hang things off the back seat and getting in and out was kind of a pain in the butt, not going to lie. But when I'm back here, it's actually pretty comfortable. Okay. Now. I might not put this in the video, but let me see what it looks like to get out. Okay. And as you can see, I'm not very graceful. I'm six foot three, because I have to say that in every video. Uh, <laughs> but as I've mentioned to you, um, you know, if you've got uh, somebody that's not going to be riding in the back seat all the time, the two door might be the best option for you. Um, I think I'll probably be going for the four door for two main reasons. One, because I've got three kids that are relatively smaller, um, so I'm going to be getting them in and out of the back seat all the time. But the other reason is if you want to take your doors off and store them in the back, the cargo area, that option is not available in the two door. It's only available on the four door. As you can see on the Badlands version, you've got this uh, carbonized gray front grille and I think it looks fine. Um, I, I probably would want to opt if I had a black truck to go with a black grill. Now the good news is Ford has advertised these grills are actually, there's a lot of them and they're actually easy to swap out. Uh, so very much like the fenders and the doors and things like that, it should not be a problem to get this thing swapped out or if you want to, I guess you could take it out, sand it and repaint it. Pretty cool stuff there. A couple of other things, uh, you've got the trail sights here are actually going to be load bearing. So if you needed to, to have a big long thing and then you needed to tie it down right here you could do that this thing is load bearing now the other thing is is it also allows you for things like this which are going to be the limb riser so if you're off-roading and you've got some trees well guess what these it'll actually just in case you didn't know what a limb riser was it rises the limbs <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, while we're out front, I want to talk about a couple of other things, and that's going to be the rigid LED light bar. Just like everything else on this truck, that is going to be an option that is available directly through Ford Accessories. They've got a team of different manufacturers for aftermarket uh, accessories. Once again, this will also be available to build into the financing of the vehicle itself. And from up here, you can also see a really decent looking uh, look at a couple of different things that is on the top of this Yakima rack, and that is going to be the 
your roto packs, fuel cell and water cell. You've also got your recovery boards and you can even put things like a, a, a high lift jack or even if you wanted to do some kind of a water storage tank on the top for you know small showers if you're off-roading or overlanding, that kind of a thing. Looking at the back of the vehicle, you'll notice a couple of different things. First off, you have a full-size spare that's going to be mounted to the actual Bronco. And from what I hear, there was a little bit of an internal debate on exactly how this rear tailgate was supposed to open. Um, obviously, what they ended up going with was going to be the swing outdoor. You'll also notice that it actually swings out to the passenger side. That is intentional because they didn't want it to swing out to the driver's side in case you were parallel parking. You don't want someone to come out and take this door off. So it's intentional that it swings out this direction. Now, before I go into the cargo area, I want to show you a couple things um, that I noticed about the vehicle. First off, you've got your uh, rear view camera that's going to be mounted in the center of this. So you're going to have nice clear view. You're not going to have the tire that is getting in the way of that. But now the other thing that I also noticed is that the third brake light, and I've seen a couple of people on some of the forums uh, that mention, hey, you know what, I, what if I go to a bigger tire, like let's say if I go with the, the, uh, the optional lift kit and I can go with 37s or whatever, if I put 37 back here, will I still be able to see my brake light? Well, the answer to that, I would guess, is going to be no. The reason for that, this is an LT28570 R17 tire. Uh, this is a Goodyear Wrangler, but wait a second doesn't say Wrangler anywhere on the tire. Have you noticed that? I wonder if that was intentional. <laughs> but side note, what I get, I kind of kind of got a little distracted there. But the third brake light, because this is a 285-70 R17, if you went up to that 37 inch tire, I would suspect that it's actually going to cover this rear brake light. Now the good news is, is this little piece right here does look like it is a simple piece of plastic uh, with some wires that are running through it. So I'm sure that the aftermarket system is gonna go wild on creating you something that'll be able to clear that out. So once again, modularity is the theme of the Bronco. Opening up the inside, let's take a look at what you've got here. Um, so the first thing you'll notice is the tailgate actually swings all the way out like that. And then you've also got this rear piece of glass that opens up. Now, when you've got it set up like this, you'll notice that the two doors got a lot less cargo space in the back of the vehicle. That is why you don't have room for those doors that come off in the actual cargo area. But there's a couple of really, really nice pieces. Like uh, you've got a couple of cargo tie downs all over the place. You've actually got your, uh, I don't think Ford is calling it the roll cage, but you've got the roll cage that goes goes all the way around the outside. Um, I think it's a great looking little vehicle. Now, the cool part is you also happen to have the tethers for the latch system. So you've got the, uh, the ability to put car seats in that back seat if that's something that you actually want to do. You'll also notice this one actually has a non-steel uh, bumper in the rear. I don't know if it's plastic or what exactly it's made out of, but it's not going to be the heavy duty steel type of a bumper in the front. So I'm pretty sure people like Addictive Desert Designs is gonna go wild on bumpers uh, for this new Bronco. Now, you also have the uh, trailer tow hitch that you can see right here and you've also got the hoop so that way if you needed to uh, put a recovery strap in here to save someone else uh, that is exactly what that's for now the other thing that i want to show you guys is you actually have a table out here for uh, once again this is an accessory as well but you've actually got a table here so that way if you need to cook something right here you have the ability to do that or if you just need to organize something right here and you've got the rest of the cargo area is full up filled up that is an, an easy way to take care of that and you've also got the Bronco lettering in this accessory. Ford has paid a lot of attention to detail to make sure this thing looks nice and looks premium. All right, now let's take a look at the inside of the Bronco. Obviously, this one is the Badlands model, and this one comes with the optional washout floor. Uh, so as you can see, it's got drain plugs in the front and the rear, so that way you can wash this thing completely out. We're going to talk about the transmission and engines here in just a second, but notice this one actually has the six-speed with the crawler gear manual transmission. Uh, you've got a transmit, or excuse me, a transfer case that is selectable. There's two different versions. And by the way, we've got a video that breaks out all of the different options and trim levels and things like that. Uh, that'll be linked down below if you want to have if seen that. Uh, a lot of you guys probably already have seen that video, but if you haven't, make sure you go check that thing out. Um, but a couple of things I want to point out to you. Because these doors are going to be completely removable, you've actually got your window uh, roll-up buttons that are going to be located in the center console. That is uh, something that exactly Jeep Wrangler has done for a while now, and it's actually pretty, pretty cool. Now, you'll notice this particular video 
vehicle does have this single climate control system. Uh, it's unaware if we're going to actually have dual climate control available at this point in time. A lot of information will probably come out once that building price actually gets unveiled. This one also happens to have the smaller screen as well. This is the 8 inch screen for Sync 4. Now you also happen to have a 12 inch screen available as an option. Uh, but rumor has it in both of those setups you're going to have the, the obviously the new, new Sync 4 but you're actually going to have the ability to download trail maps and Gaia GPS and a lot of other things that are going to be available right here in the actual infotainment screen. Another thing that you need to know about the interior is it is also, you guessed it, modular. <laughs> and just like these handles that you have here, everything that is going to be modular is going to have these unique bolts that have actually got the Bronco stamped in it. Now, the cool part about that, if you've watched any Bronco videos, you'll know that's an homage back to the original Jeeps that Ford was making back in one of the World Wars. And what they were doing is they were actually stamping the F on some of these bolts so that way you could tell if it was a Ford made Jeep back in those war times. Well, to, to pay homage to that, you've got everything that is accessibly and re easily readily removable is going to have that Bronco stamped into the bolts themselves. So things like this grab handle, the grab handle right here, and then also on the other passenger seat, you can remove those, add them, whatever you want. If you wanted to swap it out for a different one, you can do that. I love how Ford is taking the modularity to the next level. Stepping two steps back for just a second, I forgot to mention to you on the air conditioner. So as you can see, you've got the vents in the dashboard for the front, but a lot of people online are asking, well, what about the backseat people? Because in this center console, there is no air conditioner vent. So what you've actually, and I've confirmed it in this two door that the air conditioner and the heater vent is actually going to be located in the floorboard for the second row occupants. Now, obviously, since I haven't had a chance to see at the time I'm making this, haven't seen the four door in person yet, but I have a feeling that the four door is going to be the exact same way. The air conditioner and heater vents for the rear seat are going to be on the floor. So if you live somewhere like we do in Alabama or Tennessee or anywhere where it's hot, guess what? Your kid's probably going to roast, but who cares? You can just pull the roof off and cool them off that way. <laughs> Looking up here at the dash of this new Bronco, you're going to find a couple of different things. First thing is going to be this hero switch area is what Ford's calling it. It's got things like the sway bar disconnect, which this vehicle is actually optioned with. It's got the button for the front locker, the rear locker, and also the traction control, as well as the hazard lights. Now, what you have up here, some people are calling it a Picatinny or whatever, whatever you call it. Uh, basically, Ford is calling this their bring your own device uh, dashboard. <laughs> and so you can actually set up uh, like a GoPro and, and, and basically face it forward or if you need to mount a GPS you can do that here. Now this one is not optioned with it but if you go with the right trim level you can even get USB ports located up here at the dashboard so you can power those devices while you're driving down the off-road because as you can see right here Ford says that it is for off-road use only. I'd like to see how many people actually abide to that. Well I think I might be the first person to actually sit inside the frame of a Bronco but <laughs> I'm doing this for a good reason. I wanted to kind of showcase the architecture for the suspension system. As you can see this is a uh, cutaway is sometimes what Ford likes to call it, but um, you've got the frame here. It is fully boxed all the way through, but you've got an independent front suspension. The downside to an independent front suspension would be things like uh, rock crawling. Um, the, the downside is, is but you're not going to get as much articulation. Now, the good news is, is that you don't have any or have nearly as much um, probability of death wobble on, a, on an independent front suspension. But the nice part about an independent is because you can actually, if you've done what Ford has done and, and actually applied things like the sw automatic sway bar disconnects at low speeds, um, you can actually get some pretty decent arch articulation out of it. The, uh, the benefit though is on the ride, the ride and quality. Because it's in independent, you're going to get a better ride in the Bronco. Now, full disclosure, I've not driven it yet, so I'm not going to sit there and tell you for sure that it'll get a better ride than the Jeep does. Simple thought process would tell you that it's a newer technology. Just like the Raptor independent front suspension, you can actually go higher speed off-roading. Uh, try and do that in a Jeep. It won't, it won't turn out well very, very well for you. Uh, but let's do this. Let's take a look at the rest of this little cutaway. Now we're taking a look at the rear end of the Bronco. So as you can see, it does have a solid rear axle and you've got a couple of different axles that you have the chance to go with. Now this particular vehicle is upfitted with the Bilstein 
16 shocks in the front and the rear. That is going to be a part of your Sasquatch package. Keep in mind these tires are a 31570R17 and this is going to be that, that higher end suspension system that you get on the truck. The other thing I want to point out to you is actually the, uh, the trailer tow hitch. You'll notice that there's nothing that's dropping down and hanging really low, which is exactly what you want in a vehicle that is going to be designed for off-roading first. And then if you need to tow something that's very, very light, you can definitely do that with this truck. Unfortunately, it's not in this particular cutaway, but we haven't talked about the engines and transmissions yet, or at least the ones that are available. So obviously there's going to be two engines. If you've watched any Bronco videos, you probably heard that. The 2.3 liter EcoBoost is going to be the standard engine. Uh, and the cool part is, is it comes standard with a seven speed automatic, as I've already mentioned to you. Really, it's a six speed with a crawler gear, but nonetheless, it's going to be awesome. That particular setup has got about a 95 to one crawl ratio, which is crazy low. And I think it's odd that it's just lower than the Jeep Wrangler. <laughs> almost like they were gunning for them specifically. But nonetheless, let's talk about the other engine. The other engine that's going to be available is going to be the 2.7 liter EcoBoost. Now, if you know, that's a very similar motor, if not the same motor that is found in the F-150, and it is a powerhouse, probably one of our most reliable motors that we've had. Um, and I've seen a lot of people make a lot of crazy amount of horsepower and torque with that motor. Uh, unfortunately, that particular motor is not available with the manual transmission, but um, hopefully with enough push back uh, maybe if, you know enough consumers can actually talk Ford into allowing us a manual transmission with that setup um, the reason I say that is because uh, enough people pushed back on having the Sasquatch package with the manual transmission and Ford actually has officially announced that they were going to do that just because the demand was that high now the only downside and the reason I don't think that Ford will come out with the manual transmission in a, in a 2.7 is because there is nothing else that that precedes it let's take a trip down memory lane for a second the 2.3 liter ecoboost uh, is also an engine that is available in i think the ford mustang and you can get a manual transmission in that so there's probably a lot of research and development that was already done in the prior vehicles and i even think that the um the ford focus rs manual transmission uh, so i think all of those that you're talking about the the research and development is already done and you can't think of a single application or at least i can't that has a 2.3 seven liter with the manual transmission so i think it's a long shot but if enough of you complain maybe we can get it done but but nonetheless those are going to be the two different versions of the powertrains available now as i've already mentioned to you you've got depending on what trim level you get you've got different levels of goat modes goes over any terrain um i like to say it's the greatest of all time but uh, it's not what ford wants us to call it but i think that's probably what they're actually insinu insinuating but nonetheless you have different goat modes depending on what trim level you get you also happen to have two different transfer cases available. So uh, you've got a base model and then you've got a high-end version. So very similar to how the Raptor, you can change the mode that you're driving in and it'll automatically select the transfer case for you. Uh, the Bronco is going to have very similar technology that allows for that. What I'd like to do is just kind of ask a couple of different questions. Um, so uh, a, a couple things uh, that I've noticed, the Black Diamond in the Badlands has rubber washout floors. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it, I'm assuming it's the same for the second row seat. Do they also have the ability to have drain plugs in the rear as well as the front? Yeah, so there's a number of drain plugs all over the vehicle for, okay. for, both, of those, for okay. both of those. Well, for all Broncos, but especially for the washout floor okay. available ones, they've got um, active drain plugs you actually pull out. Okay, Other wow. Ones are, are passive and they'll just... They'll so so the even vehicles with uh, the cloth uh even vehicles with the cloth uh the floors they still have some they, drain they plugs they do have some drain plugs yep wow yep. i did not know that yeah. you just you just learnt me something uh, <laughs> The 2.3 liter EcoBoost is found on other vehicles. The 2.7 is found, a similar version is found on other vehicles. Are the intercoolers any different for the 2.7 uh, since it's designed for low speed off-roading and hot climates? Do you know if, is it an upgraded intercooler by chance? Um, I'm not sure on, on that specific question. It's the same base engine architecture that we would find on other vehicles. Okay. Um, all of our, both Bronco, Bronco Sport engines, they're all specifically tuned for off-road use. Okay, wonderful. That's, that's good to know. A couple people have asked about sound deadening on some of these hardtops. Mm -hmm. Do you know if any of these hardtops, I think they're going to come with two available hardtop versions. Is that correct? And do you know if they come with sound deadening? So we there's a sound deadening um, hardtop option. It's a headliner that gets added to whatever hardtop you have. Okay. Um, and it does take the the road noise down significantly. Oh so, wow. Yeah, it's a it's an option that I would 
if if uh, like I'm gonna order a Bronco and I'm gonna daily drive it and take it off road, it's just gonna make that daily drive a little a little bit more comfortable. Okay, wonderful. That's good information. On the dashboard of this vehicle, there I think they call it the bring your own device. Bring your uh, own device bar. Yeah. Is that, is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay, I can't believe I got that right. Yeah. Uh, so the question is, is that available on all the different trim levels? Or is it standard on all the trim no, levels? No, so so it's an it's an available accessory. Okay. Um, and depending on the trim level, you it will either you'll either have a, a USB power point up there on the dash, okay. or or you won't, but you'd be able to install it on, on okay. any series. Wonderful. Uh, and the last question that I've got for you, I'm assuming you've got a Bronco reserved for yourself. What trim level are you going to go with? I, I'm going to go with a four door Badlands. Oh, that's a good that's a good choice. After seeing this one, I think I might have to do the same. So, well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Sure, and uh, that there we go. Answers from the professional. And there you go. That is our video on the new 2021 Ford Bronco in person. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already done so, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel with that bell notification turned on so you don't miss any videos. And once again, if you are interested in placing a reservation, that link will be down below. We be happy to help you with the reservation. Obviously, as always, absolutely no dealer markups on any Bronco reservations, as well as no mandatory accessories added as well, because I know that's important to a lot of you guys. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, let us know. Um, you can hit us up in the comments or you can just give us a call. The phone number is right there on the screen. It's area code 205-491-0000. Thanks again so much for watching this video and have a great day.